So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on making cardboard. It's incredibly easy to do using the power of micro polys inside ZBrush. I've created three custom micro polys for this, which you can download in the description of the video. And as usual, they're totally free. Once you have them down, copy them into your program files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2022, Z micro poly folder. And in here you'll have cardboard thin, cardboard medium and cardboard thick. And they're just small ZTL files. I'm not going to go into the specifics of how micro poly works, but I'm going to show you how these particular ones work. So to start off, we're just going to go to tool over here and we'll choose plain 3D. I'm going to press shift F to see how many polygons we have. This suits my purposes. So I'm just going to say make poly mesh 3D. Obviously, if you wanted more or less, all you'd have to do is either reconstruct the subdiv or divide. I'm happy with how many I had, so I'll just undo that. This is a decent amount for what I'm looking for. So to turn on micro poly, all you have to do is hit dynamic and then turn on micro poly. And what that's going to do is replace each one of these polygons in here with the mesh that we choose here. So for example, if I choose simple, you see, I'll go in here and that polygon here, I'll choose it using the Z modeler brush. I can highlight that. That polygon here will basically be replaced with that mesh that we chose over here. So that's all that this is doing. Um, this is fake at the moment. This is dynamic. This is just a preview of what that will actually be. In order to make it real, we have to hit apply. Once we've hit apply, now all of these polygons are individual polygons and we've got a real geometry that we can work with here. So I'm going to undo that for the moment. When you click on this, if you put those files into that folder, you should have three new ones called cardboard medium, cardboard thick and cardboard thin. So we're going to start off with cardboard thick. As you can see from here, this looks a little bit strange in that it doesn't really have any thickness as such. And there's a good reason for this. Um, if we go down to the end here, if I turn on display properties and double sided, there is no thickness to this because ultimately I want these to weld together. And if there were faces on the inside of this, they would actually not weld together along this line. This will make more sense when I actually add in the thickness later on. So this is only a preview. Obviously we could be changing this to any kind of mesh. I'm just going to go back to our cardboard thick. And if I want to rotate this to face in the other direction, all I have to do is hit the rotate on the Z here. That will kind of swap it from one direction to the other. Once I'm happy with one, it doesn't really matter which, uh, all I have to do is hit apply. And that's made this real geometry. Now we have double sided turned on inside our display properties here. But in order to get true thickness, what we actually need to do is extrude these. So I'm going to hover over a face. I'm going to hit extrude. And then I'm going to say all polygons. So now when I click on a face and I extrude it, you can see we can get that until we get to a certain thickness where they touch each other. I'm going to press shift F so we can actually see what's happened here. And you can see that this is a corrugated mesh here. But right now this is still quite low res. So if I wanted to actually sculpt on this or to paint on this, I don't really have enough polygons to, to do an awful lot with it. We can go back here and we can turn on dynamic again. If I do that, if I turn on dynamic again, you'll see it's still going to remember that the micro poly was on. So it's going to replace each of these faces. These are now individual faces with the micro poly. So as soon as I turn dynamic on, it's going to look strange until I turn this off. I don't want to do this this time. This time I actually want it to smooth twice. Now that may be smoothing it too much. You can see here that the polygon, the edges of these are getting very, very soft. So what we want to do is actually go to our crease here and then we want to actually say crease polygroups and that's going to make these edges really really hard. Now they may actually be a little bit too hard so uh, the way the creasing works inside ZBrush is that it will look at the dynamic subdivision so I can hold down shift if I want to see both of these at the same time. So if I set my subdivisions to three for example if my creasing is down to two well then it will stay hard for the first two subdivisions and then subdivide. If I set it to one, it will stay hard for one subdivision and then subdivide. If I set it down to zero, it will ignore creasing altogether. So if we want the creasing to be a little bit tighter, we can bring it up to one and bring it up to two if you want it really tight. And if this is set to three, if we make these the same, well then it will be razor sharp. So the further these two numbers are from each other, the softer this is gonna get. I'm kind of happy with this, two for my creasing here and three for my subdivisions. Once I've done that, I can just hit apply. and I now have 2.8 million polygons on this. That means that this is going to be enough for me to actually sculpt on this surface. So I can take a texture, for example, I can import one. 
So I've gone to tilingtextures.com and I found a tiling cardboard and downloaded that texture. Once you have that texture downloaded, you can go to texture, import, select the texture, say open. That will add it into our texture menu. We can now select it and then using the little plus minus here, we can add it to spotlight. So this will bring it into spotlight and we can resize it here on our screen. I'm going to press shift Z to get rid of this until I align my my cardboard up. I'm going to press Z to bring it back and I'm going to change to a paintbrush. I'm going to press B, P and then A. Now I can press Z. I'll change the size of my brush. and I'll basically just paint onto our model here. So I'm just basically taking this texture and painting it on. I'll press Shift Z to get rid of that and we now have a cardboard on this. Let's push it all the way through. So with that cardboard texture, now we can start sculpting as well. So I can take something like a damn standard brush and just push in some lines, some crease lines. I can add, add onto the surface by holding down Alt. So I can raise it off the surface. We can make them different sizes. And basically just modify this as we see fit. We can take our move brush and start bending some stuff and make it just a little bit more organic, a little bit more natural. Uh, we can even take a pinch brush, so B, P, and I. We can pinch some stuff together. Uh, we can take a mask. So if I change this to mask lasso, we can take a mask and just kind of lasso an area. Press W. I'm going to control tap to invert that mask. I'm going to alt tap here where I want it to bend. And I'm just going to bend this and then maybe lift it up. Rotate it slightly. Get rid of my mask. So we can kind of play with this until we get a surface that we think looks decent. And that's it. We're done. So if you want to try some of the other ones here, I'm just going to undo all of this. So I've undone to the part where dynamic subdivision for our plane was actually giving us that. This time I'm going to change it to the medium one. So I can just click on this, choose cardboard medium. As soon as I've done that, I can hit apply. That will make it real geometry. So now we can hover over a single polygon with our Z modeler brush, choose extrude all polygons and give this some thickness. As usual, I'm going to turn on dynamic again. I'm going to turn off micro poly. I'm going to bring my creasing down to one, my subdivisions up to three just so we actually get this. And you see, I haven't actually creased it yet. I'll have to hit the crease polygroups in order to get that creasing. That'll give us those slightly soft edges. And now we can just hit apply to make that into real geometry. Once we've done that, we can go to our texture, load our texture, add it to spotlight. If it's not already there, and then paint again. So that's it. You'll see that this one here, the medium is actually not corrugated and I've just chosen specifically to do that in case you want to put your own texture on that in case you don't like the medium the same thing applies for the thin but if you did want to change it I'll just undo this if you did want to change it to be a corrugated surface you can actually do that by just clicking on this holding down alt and then when you click on this it will kick it up to our sub tools up here so we now have that tool that, that micro poly mesh up here that allows us to modify it here so for example now I could hover over an edge Choose insert multiple edge loops, click and drag on this. I can click on the same edge at the top. And now with symmetry turned on, I'll press X to turn on symmetry. We can do stuff like uh, hold down control. I have mask lasso still on. So I'm just going to take these, control tap to get the inverse, W. I'm going to hold down alt to reset my gizmo just to make sure I'm moving it up or down. So I can get that corrugated look by moving these up or down. And once I've got that, to actually get this back over into our original over here, all we have to do is hold down control. And when we hold down control and tap on this, that will allow us to choose any mesh. Like we could choose a, a, a gear, we could choose cylinders, cones, anything like that. But it'll also allow us to choose the one that we've just edited, which is that cardboard medium, this one up here. So hold down control, click on that. And now you're gonna get that corrugated look to your medium. So the same thing applies, we'll hit apply to make that into real geometry. Once we, ha we have, we can extrude all polygons, give it that thickness. We can crease our poly groups, turn on dynamic again, turn off the micro poly because we don't need it this time, increase our subdivisions to three or four and bring our crease level down to two, for example, just to give that a slight, a slight bevel there. 
So the same thing applies, we hit apply, this is now real geometry and we can take our damn standard brush and start sculpting into this surface or we can start texturing as we did before. So I hope this tip helps and as usual enjoy the brushes, I hope they prove useful to you. And if you want to see more of this kind of content don't forget to click like and subscribe. Alright, cheers, bye.